Hey, what it do, what it do, YouTube? It's your boy Q back with some more Wilted Rose action. This time, we are going to be seeing the Losers Bracket semifinal, which puts Team Genesis, who we actually just saw here recently, beat Manifest in order to get into this position, as they are going to be taking on Team Purgatory after we saw them beat Team Owned in very convincing fashion. Now, we are going to be getting started on the Death Slinger on the Suffocation Pit, then back to Gas Heaven, which has been picked a lot here recently, and Dead by OCE, which makes sense as it is the home of the Blight. And if we need to for set number three, we will be going back to the Father Campbell's Chapel for the Nurse set. Now, we do have two teams looking to move into the Loser's Bracket Final, but only one team is going to be able to do just that. Stay locked into your seats as we are going to be singing the first set, the Slinger set coming down to just one point. And if you do enjoy the video, do me a huge favor, leave a like and a comment. That's gonna help us out with a good old YouTube algorithm, put our content in front of more people. And do make sure you can help me out because we are now less than 10 subs away from 400 over here on the YouTube. Slap that button, turn those notifications, and uh, you know, join the community as we chase down a thousand over here on YouTube, all right? Dead by OCE does have some big things coming up. So as always, I am going to leave a link for their Discord down in the description below as well as personal links for myself as well like my own discord as well as my stream and if you ever want to come kick it with me when i'm not shouting about exciting dvd action from competitive side feel free to come on by and kick it sometime yeah but until we catch y'all back here on this channel for some more action don't forget with everything crazy going on in the world today be true be you be sincere game hard and love harder all right y'all it's your boy q signing out all right let's take another trip on back into the fog starting off matchup number two here between genesis and purgatory going to be starting with genesis on the killer side on the suffocation pit we've actually looks like we have already not only found a survivor looks like we've actually already been able to uh uh, put a harpoon in the chest and be able to get the broken status here now going to be get prison chain value not going to be able to get the hit here and uh right now this is a pretty decent loop enough against the slinger just because both rocks are just long enough to kind of like in the same fashion we just had so it's going to force the shot here and this is more time wasted because we're taking chase back into the corrupt side yeah off we go into the corrupt i'm uh not able to see the Did greatest i don't think so i think it was a bit of a miss uh not entirely sure what's going on. A little bit pixelated for me here just because of uh, Discord Australia things. things. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there does appear to be a chase and there is a shot. <laughs> and a down. <laughs> and a down. So we will be seeing our first talk with four gens remaining. I'm unsure if there's going to be progress on any of the other gens, but uh, a really uh, close hook here. So we will see our survivor head on up there and keep it warm while we go and look for someone else there's the other gen Ooh, and another my one. goodness oh, a bunch of guys. filthy gen rushers three gens here not even corrupt intervention has been off the gens here yet being super efficient gonna be getting some value getting the m1 here onto the nancy the one thing though is all the gens that had popped were all in front of us so we should know where our survivors were i didn't think we had somebody behind us that was they're sticky. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh! Not like this. Oh. Oh. oh not oh, like this. Oh. There's a basement oh, here too. Oh, this. Well, and this is going to be a basement hook, but the only problem is our since our survivors here from Purgatory have just came out here and absolutely pounded these gens. Like, yeah, yeah. you have a basement hook, but. It's not even like you have a three gen over here you can protect. This is tough. Yeah, it really just shows how important that first chase is. If you overcommit uh, to that first chase, you're going to lose so much pressure. And in my opinion, that wasn't even the best chase. It wasn't even that long. But the pressure of the gens uh, and, and splitting on those gens to, to enable our survivor team to have such a good start uh, really helped them out. We do see a basement unhook. Uh, our slinger doesn't really care in the slightest. He is coming over here to have a look at the uh, generator that has been switched and we do find some scratch marks leading to our next survivor who 
Oh, says get stunned, stupid. Able to get a little bit of distance. The one thing we got to keep in mind, I believe this is the Nia, which does mean that that is a survivor that we've already hooked. And I would imagine right now, kind of knowing the situation you're in, you've already lost three gens. You don't have a three gen to protect. I feel like right now, Bazzy's probably going to be trying to accumulate the last two fresh hooks, right? Surely. I mean, he's not silly. He knows what he needs to do and who his targets will be, which wouldn't surprise me why he dropped that chase on the other side. Uh, but he is coming here for the Nancy, so he's trying to do a bit of tunneling. Uh, they have been able to get healed again. We do see another gen pop on uh, what may have been the shack side. Could have been that... Uh, that generator that was at main, uh, that was blocked, missing the shot there, uh, at Shaq. What he chooses to do now, I think he's just gonna commit. Oh yeah. He's going to head on over to, uh, the other side. We've got a gate there. He is a fast boy. Probably, uh, looking to get someone down here. We do see scratch marks heading towards the gate. Uh, we do see progress on the gate, so it's only a matter of time now. I did just see a near to the right behind these rocks. I'm sure Bassie would have seen it too. Uh, and we will be starting this chase and ending it quite quickly with Noed. Yeah, and that is going to be... It looks like here, Bazzi is going to go uh, go ahead and go for the slug. Build a little bit of additional pressure. We know that there's a little bit of progress on that door over behind us. If I had to guess, we are trying to find... Oh, Whoa! a nice shot here. Getting the harpoon. I'm not sure if that hit the eye or what, but that was up on the top of the head. That was a very nice shot here. And that's going to be a fresh hook. And I was going to say, I'm not sure which door got opened. If it's the door that we were at over right on this side of the map. Yeah, I think th that's the case with those door lights there. I would imagine they just take the three out here. Oh sure. no, don't get caught out of position. I mean, they've got to know where the know it is, right? They would have communicated where the know it is. Uh, I'm actually, some are they teabagging there? Like what's, it's not this gate queue. Oh, this is, this is actually trouble. Now, of course, the good news is this might be enough time for you to rotate over and grab your other survivor. But at this point, you're just trading, uh, you know, two hook states for two oh! hook states with Zarina getting saved here and Nia being so far back. But maybe here with this being the case, I mean, my boy Caleb walks with a limp. I don't know if he's going to be able to close this distance. Oh, baby, we got one shot, one opportunity. He's, oh, He's a no. fast boy, Q. Don't underestimate him. The question is, does she have the DS2 oh! though, right? Oh, he may slap them with the D. This would be huge here. I mean, we're going to be seeing trying to wait the timeout. Time oh, no. All right, well, we do have Silly Cross Map still on the floor. What's he going to do? Is he going to wait it out? I didn't happen to see. I don't know where our hatch is at, too, because this could be tough oh, because if hatch is team. back at main right? and then you have a D strike here, this could oh, be a lot of stages change. Yeah, this is this is pretty intense. I don't it I'm trying to think about how no I'm trying to think about where the Zarina went down at about how much time I, I think if you wait till Zarina is right about out the door, I think that should be 60 seconds. Surely, surely. This is going to be close here, but this is also allowing our other survivor across the map to be able. So we get. <sighs> okay, all right. So there's one. <laughs> so you've got one here at this door, and also the good news for you too is like, but this hook isn't a fresh hook, so you don't have to worry about deliverance either, right? So that's going to be like the good news. You don't have to worry about losing this hook, but now you still have to find your slug. Yeah. So. uh I mean, Bassie's got good headphones. He's very good at listening, but there's also been a large amount of time here. Uh, Silly could really oh, be oh. waiting for the hatch right there. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. You. Wow, Just kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of ruined the suspense. But that, I mean, that is a 4K, and that's a 4K. I mean, granted, they they did get the uh, the gens done here, right? Yeah, that was a so, really good you, you performance get two out. Gens. Yeah, solid yeah. performance by the survivors is just, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately here, just uh, the, kind of getting the two left behind an end game. So, I mean, we're looking, you're going to be looking at a tie score here of 15 to 15 after trial number one. That's, 
Th th if this is how the rest of this matchup goes, I'm here for it. We have switched sides and we've got strike on Caleb Quinn, the slinger. I am excited to see if his shots are better than Bassie's. Uh... <laughs> and also to see uh, how fast these gens get done now. We do have uh, our resident Australian Jazzy on Jane. So I'm sure Strike is absolutely shaking in his boots. We do also have a very different build here uh, on Strike Slinger. So I am super excited to see how this one goes. Just coming out for the jugular right off the bat. See if he's just shitting his shots <laughs> better than Vazzy. My God. Yeah, we see Hilo uh, now moving up into the main side of our map here. And it, it's, again, looking at one of these kind of strange, like, split corrupts that were it almost, I don't want to say it's becoming the norm, but seems to become a little bit more of the norm uh, on this map, which does uh, kind of force the mid portion or, like, the beginning portion of this game. If the survivors want to work on gens, they have to be become a little bit more into the middle of the map. Makes it a little bit easier to kind of manage the early part of the trial, which of course is where Caleb can struggle just a little bit. We see a very early pallet throw back here into this corner of the map. There is only one corrupt gen over, on, or two corrupt gens over on this side, one on the opposite side. Um, and right now, if you can take this first chase, especially if you can move it back like towards Shaq and burn quite a bit of time, I mean, you could, uh, I mean, you could really allow your team of quite a bit of freedom to be able to start cranking these gens here. Cause you're gonna yeah. need it. Looks like a really nice place to go as well. The corrupts there, you've got the shack, a lot of safety. We will be taking a hit in the mid though. Hopefully we do have some uh, some kids over at main pumping out those gens. Uh, get a bit of pressure on the board for our survivor teams. Uh, not able to see too much because of the quality, but we are in chase with someone at a rock. It is Jazzy taking a hit there. We'll be continuing through uh through mid from uh, from the looks of things corrupt is now gone the whole map is yours oh nice shot. shot see you oh, gotta you gotta put them against each other to make sure that they get the shots see now strike is like i need to impress everyone i need to show them my hits are better than bassies this is going to be an early down though we talk about the corrupted just came up off of those gens here not too long ago and now you've got a basement hook over here the only the only thing that's really working against you unfortunately is rng did kind of slide these gens a little bit more towards the top side oh not able to find Ow. connection with the heel here but we do see two gens already getting pumped out oh face up that was a nice one. That was a nice one there. Bit of a hit. A uh, little bit of a distance to go before they get to anything there. And with that faster reload speed, we'll be able to catch up pretty quickly. But he's choosing to go back to the basement, which is a pretty smart choice. He knows that there's going to be someone over here injured and so someone right in his face. That would have been a jump scare for Nia, I'm telling you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, and that forces a very valuable resource down just to make sure you don't instantly go back down the basement. But the problem is that risk isn't gone, right? I mean, we see scratch marks here, throwing another pallet. We're creating a little bit of a dead zone over here on the shack side. Hold that, says Nia, oh. as we drop the firecracker to be able to get a little bit of distance. Shot through the window here and with that prison chain add-on, going to be able to get the down. I do believe however that we have been able to at least pull the slinger far enough away from basement that that shouldn't be a threat however we can still kind of keep this uh hook back by oh i was gonna say what could be a three gen but then you know caster's like curse doing its good. thing yeah right there and again survivors just doing a really good job of with their gen spread here two on top two on bottom there's really not much you can do here and they're all full health as well. We did see a nice little reset on Seabass as well. So Survivor team uh, in a pretty good spot. Couple of gens left. Everyone's full health. We do have a hook in mid, um, mm. but uh, you know, Strikes uh, kind of proxying the area, looking to see if our survivors could be around coming in for the unhook. Wouldn't surprise me here if he does a little bit of confirming. We're not in pubs, so we won't minus rep him for it. It is fine, uh, but he will want to get a few stages here. Uh, I think uh, if he commits to, to 
those scratch marks? No, he just wants to, to sit around the hook, which probably is the best choice for now. More than likely, we will have someone on that gen far behind main. Um, we got someone over here. They do get the save. Very well uh, communicated there, obviously, coming in, getting that unhook while his back was turned. And, of course, as survivors do, running to main. Yeah, that good old Shift W tech moving up towards the top mid here. And I was going to honestly say that I, I wouldn't have been surprised if our survivors here from Genesis allowed the stage to be confirmed simply because you had three. Oh! A Ace, are you okay, my guy? I think he's trying to do a penis tech. He's trying to make a montage. <laughs> uh... <laughs> We did hear a, a ding of Stabiffle. I'm sure they all know that he has Stabiffle now, and that would have been communicated because they'd be saying, what on earth? Uh, we need to see if that man's got Iron Will in the end game chat. There's only one way to explain that. He thought he could pull a sneaky on our Caleb Quinn here. Uh, we will see if he had Iron Will, and uh, if he didn't, then maybe we'll just, uh, we'll just put it down to a misclick. Uh, that will be fine, but one gen remaining now. We are currently at three uh, three stages, so uh, pretty nice position now. Just standing on the hill, looking at the scenery. We do see someone sneaking in. Bit of a dead zone back here, though. Not too much to work with. We've got one pallet. Uh, if zoned correctly, won't be able to make it to main. Is going for the shot, uh, and he gets it. Really nicely done there. Zarina, uh, not silly, trying to get out of this area. I don't know how far she'll get, though. Not very, but we do see the unhook coming in, which is, uh, which is a good job by the survivor team. Seabass will be going down now. Uh, really fast reset as well, uh, on the ace there. So once again, we're in a position where we've got three survivors at full health. Seabass, uh, is on a hook. That is his first hook. Wouldn't surprise me if Strike wants to camp this out and maybe get a second stage from him. We've got two gens down here relatively close in the area, which he can pretty much just kind of walk between the hook and these gens. Uh, he may just want to give up on that far one, let it pop. Um, we can have a look where the, where the gates are as well once that gen is done, but uh, he seems to be in a pretty nice spot here. Yeah, I, it's kind of a tough situation. We, I saw... Uh, strike take chase with Bazzy there and it, it was kind of a weird take uh, catch take of that in like a weird catch 22 sort of situation because now your moriable survivor I was gonna say is on hook I, I kind of feel like you might have wanted to leave them on hook just a little bit longer but uh, yeah. maybe not with the the haste status maybe maybe our uh, uh, our friend jazzy over here they're like yo he's he's Hook boy. And uh, they figured the no ed, which uh, meant that he was going to be a quick down. We see the doors getting open very, very quickly. And if that's all yeah. three survivors out the door, I believe that... Seabass is not risking it. He's oh, out yeah. of there. Nah, Deuce is by I am gone. That should be, if that's the case, I believe Genesis taking set point number one here. Oh, this is... Oh, this is... Oh. So, with the way things worked out here, yeah, you got all four fresh hooks, but by getting three survivors out the door with two stages available apiece, they actually, instead of tying things up at 15-15 the way uh, the first game was, the score of game number two was 16-15 to 15 in favor of Genesis leading a set point score for Genesis for set number one after a total score of 31 to 30. That is, so about, that's close. as tough as it can get. That is as close as it can get. And again, if this leads to how close things are through the rest of this matchup, I am all here for it. I told you we were gonna have good close games, Q. I knew it. I could that just tell. Really well played by both sides there. Uh, we do see uh, a couple of healing perks in there, which explains those speedy resets that the, that the survivors were getting. Uh, we are going to head on over for our uh, second set. Uh, 
We're going, going to be back on the you. blights. Yeah, gas heaven. We're going back. Let's uh, see what our uh, survivors and our Talbot Grimes can do. Uh, we'll catch you after this small break. All right, let's take another trip here back into the fog. We're going to be seeing the Blight coming out with that cool Prime Skin Cane. That's probably one of my favorite cosmetics. Wish I could have gotten that thing. But we're back on the Gas Heaven here. And Gas Heaven is one of those maps that I feel like adds a little bit of extra strategy depending on what RNG gives you here. And I mean, we're going to see the three uh, Corrupted Gens does include the generator in the main building here, which makes these middle gens that much more valuable during these first two minutes, because if you can protect those plus deplete some resources, you can really set yourself up for a strong trial. Yeah, I think uh, the the other two times we've been on, on Gas Heaven, you know, we've seen various layouts of the map and RNG, you know, somewhat favoring killer and somewhat favoring survivor. So uh, it's always fun to see what people end up with. And as you can see here, as I always, uh, as I always talk about taking the first chase to main, here we go straight there, dropping the pallets. We will see Strike coming through, getting rid of the pallet in order to continue chase through main. Uh, considering this gen in here is uh, is corrupted, it's a really good chase uh, for the survivor, obviously. Uh, for the killer, I'm not quite sure if you'd want to commit to this. We should see a couple of gens uh, while we see our poor survivor hit through the pallet vaulting the window as the Talbot Grimes looking to get it down as fast as possible but missing that shot unfortunately. Q, how do you think this chases? I mean, this is honestly, right now, we see uh, the juice coming from Nia. This is going to be big because even though the double click ends up causing just a, you know, Nia to back up into the wall here, which is going to cause the down, that's two minutes of time that our survivors have had on these generators. It's only one gen there. Yeah, I was going to say, wouldn't be surprised if we see a second, maybe even a third popping off in sequence here, which uh, is a really strong start for our survivors. Yeah, there it is there. Three generators done, a bunch of filthy gen rushers. Um, the one thing to keep in mind though, of course, three gens that were corrupt still together. And there is one gen that was kind of more middle that I feel like might have been a good idea to get that one done because it can kind of be strung together with the other three gens here. But um, and also with the you know, first chase being done in main, all of our resources over here are gone. So we got to be a little careful. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the risk you, you take, right, with having a really good first chase. You know, you can use up a lot of the resources. We do, unfortunately, see Jazzy get hit through the window uh, on the powerful American ping. Uh, Jazzy will be heading onto a hook now just in front of me. But I think the sacrifice that you, uh, that you make when you have a really good first chase is a lot of the resources, as you said, Q. So, you know, there's a big choice to be made by survivors if you want to have a really good first chase ensure that you get those three gens done um at, at, at what cost i think yeah and i mean it, the one thing that does of course help if you go on the longer first chase especially on the blight you know that some of those uh extra like gen protection perks are uh like taken away you don't have to worry about like the dead man you don't have to worry about the deadlock you don't have to worry about you know the the pain residence yeah. whatever the first hook does come in so Throughout the entirety of the first chase, especially on a killer like the Blight, I think we tend to see less teams kind of more move in for the body blocks like we see against the M1s, especially in that case, because you try and see if you can get two again, maybe three gens in this case. And even I wouldn't be surprised to see if they get the fourth done relatively soon. I just don't know which one it's on because we've passed a couple of them and yeah. not too much progress across the board. Yeah, oh, uh, no. it was over there. Was that one? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Speak of the devil, we do start a chase now here. So many hits through windows here. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's strikes net. Uh, I think he just uh, is really good at knowing the farthing that these survivors are going to take. So he's just swinging for them. Uh, nicely done there by Jake in order to get to the next tile. 
One gen left though, uh, really nicely done by the survivors. We do have a for the people play, if I'm seeing things correctly. We did just see the Jake get healed and Seabass is now broken. Once again, running main, a lot of scratch marks in here. Unsure who they're connected to though. Uh, not too much left in this area, so I'm not quite sure why they want to hang around here so badly. I'm confused. Um, I, I think the main reason I am confused is just, it's not like, I feel like a lot of the time when we see For the People come out, it's like to prevent the tunnel out, right? But yeah. we've only at two hooks, and it's with one hook on Miji and one on Jazzy, so no one's on the verge of getting tunneled out. But now you have somebody who is fresh hook who only would take one hit to be on the ground and giving that very valuable fresh um, hook over to our survivor here. I mean, who am I to say? I guess there, unless maybe it was for resilient. We'll have to see if maybe that was for a potential resilience value, possibly to get extra speed on maybe that. Maybe he just he just wanted value from his perk. Q. I mean, you don't, you don't have a for the people unnecessarily just because you want to say that you've been able to use it. I, I mean, if I'm <laughs> wanting the the to escape is the accession for blood points, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we do saw have a door the last open. Gen. Yeah, we're we're pretty much done here. We've uh, we've got a gate open. We've got one injured survivor and three full health. We've only got two stages. Um, but you know, these survivors were really good in their chases. Running main, which is so strong against Blight, uh, without the incredible bump logic that everybody refers to as being required on him. Coming in for the body blocks here. Can we get the down? Oh, he's trying for it. Oh, no. The collision took him too far away. That should be everybody out and safe, I think. Yeah, that's tough. I think that a little bit of you talked about that collision kind of forced that last uh, trek around trying to be a hug tech trade. It ended up being just a little bit wide, which there's no collision and you were way far away from the door at that point. That allows the four out the door. Really, really strong performance here from the survivors of Team Genesis, limiting six points to our killer here. Uh, strike now leading a point to, uh, or a score of 20 to six in set number two with our first trial here. And that is going to be with, of course, Genesis going to be coming out on the killer side here in uh, the next trial. So a very um, clear, very concise, very, I don't want to say easy win condition, but very obtainable win condition here. So we will see if uh, maybe we can see Purgatory's survivors respond in a similar fashion here after a very quick break. All right, let's take another trip on back into the fog here. Purgatory under a whole lot of pressure here on the survivor side. Basically needing to allow one one stage. That's it. That's it. And we see, I mean, already dropping two pallets very early this time. Just narrowly avoiding taking the M1 is the Nancy here in we are working in the corrupt side of the map where you want to be taking chase. Um, but at the same time, you kind of want to get, I feel like with this sort of wind condition, you would like to get into the middle of the map first, really work from the inside out with the amount of uh, pallets, with the amount of resources, maybe even try and make yourself into the, or take your way into the main building if possible. But right now we're going to be seeing our killer here from Genesis really just kind of forcing these pallets down rel relatively quickly, probably trying to get as many of those out of the way because with only three stages needed, the wind condition is uh, pretty pretty well obtainable. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This was a relatively quick find as well and a really early chase. We do see the hit through the window and we'll be seeing our first hook uh, with five gens left. Unsure if the survivors had enough time to split up, find the gens, and then complete them. But we could certainly get one, maybe even two gens from that chase alone. Yeah, so now this is gonna be a, minute, a hook in the middle of the map too, which should allow our killer, right, to be able to pretty quickly find themselves another survivor. If it's another fresh hook survivor, then, uh, I mean, oh my goodness, already finding a hit here as well going to apply the pop goes the weasel here which we're also going to be seeing that generator uh glowing yellow back behind us and this is the, now the second time here i think what today seeing the pop call of brian combo yeah. and uh it's it's interesting to see that starting to shift more 
Yeah, it's it's so nice. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, there's still regressions and slowdowns, but it's nice to see uh, our killers find synergy and some newer perks and some combos that um, are fresh and, and new and still help them uh, get that pressure and regress the gens. Because, you know, as we've seen over the last few games, it's easy to, to get those gens done within what one chase of, uh, of loading in. So it's nice for the killers to be able to have something else to, to help them out. Uh, just like uh, this survivor's got all of these pallets to help him out in, uh, in his epic chase. But he will be going down here and, uh, and probably get hooked right out the front of Main in the middle. Ooh. Oh, with the ballast save to be Never able mind. to get the survivor off of the shoulder. Remember, really, you can only allow two hook states here. Unless you, the only way that you could get away with allowing two hook states is if both hook states are on to B. Um, and then everyone else is out because, of course, the hook states points are more front loaded here right but if it is two fresh hooks that does at least tie it and we've got three injured survivors across the board here which means with that the nanophobia 15 percent slowdown until we had seen the heal all right we see our killer not even gun shy after the first pallet save just sticking that head right back into the pallet space again no one around this time that is going to be the tie condition at least for set number two which means the next hook state is going to be genesis um you know moving things on and going to our next round here yeah that's right we do see a deliverance play potentially uh i mean it is on adams so it's his teachable perk you'd expect it it will be uh coming in here to pop the gen at main uh, we do see another gen pop off in the distance, though, while he is uh, his in main. We do have a survivor back here, I think. They may have just dropped the pallet and dipped. So the Talbot Grimes is kind of just looking around for his next victim, and he has found them. A nice hit there on the Nia, who will be running back into the dead zone that was created with the first chase. So I'm unsure if there was a bit of, uh, you know, communication lapse in uh, not letting anyone know where there were uh, resources dropped, but we do see Nia going down here, which will be stage number three. Yeah, and with that, that is going to be Genesis squaring things away here as far as this set. And I got to say, you know, kind of surprised. I felt that both of the sets, honestly, this uh, morning, well, I almost said morning. I'm sorry. Morning for me. Evening for most of <laughs> y'all. Um, I, I was kind of expecting both of these sets to be going into three or both of these matchups would be going into three sets and instead we see both teams making light work and of course that means now with genesis uh here oh it gets done stupid says the adam being able to create a little bit of extra distance but uh now with this win here we're going to be seeing genesis moving on to uh take on endless who of course did just fall to green's team in our last matchup yeah, well, we have only been seeing the two sets uh, from our from our teams. They have been so close and so entertaining. So it's really nice uh, to see that bit of a whiff coming out here. As you can see, like the teamwork from our survivors coming in, taking the hits. Uh, they want to get people out. They want to be able to minimize those stages. But against a, a blight, it can be very difficult. Uh, to get away once you take that hit and once you are injured. So a lot of body blocks coming in here, which uh, <laughs> also means a lot of planatophobia value. We're back on the original target, which is the Adam dropping some bags of tea as he, uh, as he makes that vault. Another whiff here from, uh, from Midgey leaving Adam uh, a little bit of distance to be able to get to the next tile, but nothing on the way there. I'm unsure if he makes it. Even if he does, there is nothing there anyway. Yeah, this is going to be tough. We're going to actually see a slug here. Uh, from Miji, which is an interesting play here, trying to see if you can find yourself a survivor that actually would have been catching the tail end of an injured survivor had you been able to make connection here. That's going to be the Zarina going around the outside. Also going to have an injured Nancy now after an M1. So four injured survivors completely value. across the board. So big Thananophobia value right now. 20% slowdown. Seeing some scratch marks moving into the main building here. I believe they have already made their way through the actual wind 
crypto, or at least have made themselves through the uh, into the the actual garage. But I think being stuck in this pallet not where you want to be. No, they took some unique pathing there, which uh, allowed them to get some distance. They did manage to get out of that terrifying room, though. Uh, with the door shut, it can be a little bit scary in there, especially when you're with a blight who's capable of downing you quite easily at that pallet. We do unfortunately see uh, our survivor, Zarina Sin, uh, go down, and he will be hooked uh, outside main. This hook getting such a workout this game. Uh, only a matter of time now before our last gen pops, surely, but the... Uh, the Talbot Grimes is not going to allow that, and he's heading on over with his pop goes the weasel call of Brian Combo to figure out where he wants to use it as he finds some scratch marks. And uh, why pop a gen when you can start a chase with a survivor? Nothing over here. Absolutely nothing. Oh. Big dead hard. He saw it coming. Midgey is not joking today. Baiting dead hards for days. They knew that someone had to have it, and we will see our near head onto a hook right now. Yeah, and this is big. I mean, we see doing a good job of keeping up the pressure. The only thing is we are, you know, this late into the trial and we do still have all four survivors. So there it is. Generator number five getting complete. And we have already exposed all of the perks with the Call of Brian, the Nanophobia pop, and of course the Corrupt. So that means no no ed to be in play here from Miji. No no way out as well, which means our survivors can already start attacking these doors, even though, of course, we have already had a decision. Always love watching when our teams decide to still play it out all the way to the end. We see the save here, and it is actually going to be Miji going for the slug, not going for the slug, actually going to come back over here and pick this up. Yeah, just assessing the situation there. Just wanted to... Uh... To, to check that they were unhooked safely, that everyone's okay, uh, and then to, to make sure that they weren't going to do any resetting under the hook. Uh, we do see uh, Silly taking a hit now as he runs to the gate. These rushes are going to regenerate quite fast. We do know that there is a dead hard here, though. Can we bait it out? What do we do? Ooh! Oh! We're not going to be able to have enough distance there with the body from Ace. Going to go ahead and hit Ace, or not Ace, the Atom. So they have to go ahead and create distance. Going to go ahead and force out the Atom. Should probably do the same thing with the Nancy. Now the only question is, do you continue to allow your survivor to give up on Hook, or do you go for the full style points and go for the save across the way? We see Miji closing the distance, trying to work the tech around the truck, not going to be able to get it just quite there. And with that, Maybe a save comes in? No. No, I, I think they're quite uh, quite content in letting Sin die on the hook. Uh, if we've got Hatchet Shack, we should be okay. We're trying to bring the killer uh, bring the killer away. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, maybe they do want to get the unhook. Uh, unfortunately, they don't, though. I'm interested to see now if they go for a Hatchet Shack play. Uh, we've got Nancy here floating around the exit gates, but our injured Nia is in the map somewhere. 1v1 or sub? Standoff! What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we we've got see the heal? reset, though. Yeah, yeah. So that should allow the two out here, at least, I would imagine, unless maybe uh, the heal came in back at Shaq and we're trying to line them up for one last 1v1. I think Miji, though, is just kind of content allowing the... Uh, the two. I mean, you did get the, you got the 1K. You got the, yeah, the Nodders Not coming it. in here uh, with the Nia on the way out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they hit the thin out of value. <laughs> here's, here's the, here's what I have to uh, assume for this next matchup here with Genesis and Endless here after what we've seen thus far today. Um, I think we're gonna see a blight. Obviously, the Genesis, uh, the blight here was Genesis. Genesis was Genesis's pick and also even though they had lost the set in the first game uh the blight was endless's set as well which makes you think both teams feel a lot of confidence so I think we're probably going to see that but of course they got to do their quick uh picks and bands and things which means we are going to be seeing a little bit longer of a break I think they're already uh, gonna be jumping in getting the process of that going but I'm gonna be really interested to see what killer selection we get here so uh, while we're having an extra second you know get yourself a little uh a little stretch in maybe go pour yourself a cup of coffee grab yourself some noodles or something and uh, we will be back here with endless versus Genesis after a break if you ain't show, show me. You just don't wanna be. You wanna be me, but you will.